Welcome to the Church of the Living God, Living Godcast. Our prayer is that this message speaks to you, impacts you, and inspires you. Please enjoy today's message, and we invite you to contact us if you need prayer, appreciate this word, or would like more information on Church of the Living God. Be blessed today. This message this morning is called The Glory and Power Exchange. The Glory and Power Exchange. I just about just go ahead and pray now and just go ahead and call the altar. But what God has done for us is bigger and it is deeper and it is greater than our own perception. We cannot fully grasp. And the Bible tells us that. Ear has not heard. Right, I has not seen, neither has it entered into the heart of man what God has prepared for them that love Him. Now, I don't know about you, but I got a big imagination. I got a big imagination. But he said, you can't even imagine what he's got prepared. You, you know, we, we picture golden streets and we picture us standing around, you know, on the golden streets and talking and, and, and getting ready for the marriage supper of the Lamb and having a meal and all this. We have no idea. We have no idea what He has called us that He may pour upon us. Your faith in Jesus Christ has moved God the Father beyond what you can imagine. People say, well, everybody believes in Jesus. No, they do not. There are billions of people that worship false gods, Islamic gods, Hindu gods, many gods, some of their own gods, and many multitudes worship the devil. The devil of all things. My goodness. Said in Revelation chapter 20 that when we see the devil, just as he's getting ready to be thrown into the lake of fire, when we see the devil, we're going to look at him and we're going to say, you mean that's him? That little, scrawny, slimy, snake of a being? We picture the devil as some big powerhouse. And he is not. He is a deceiver and a liar. And he is a God wannabe. But he is not God. And he will be cast into the lake of fire. He will be. And we will see him and we will not be impressed. Not only we as Christians will not be impressed. The Bible said the nations would look upon him and not be impressed in who he is. They will be surprised that he was such a small and deceptive being. Amen. If you're serving Jesus, you're serving the right one. Amen. Amen. Uh, God didn't crucify anybody else for you but Jesus Christ. John 17, Jesus is talking. Verse 1 and 2, These words spake Jesus and lifted up his eyes to heaven and said, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son that thy Son also may glorify thee. As thou hast given him power over all flesh. Somebody say all flesh. Did you get that? As thou hast given him power over all flesh. That he should give eternal life. To as many as thou hast given him. I'm going to preach the glory and power exchange. Father I ask you for an utterance. An anointing not only to preach this gospel. But to hear a hearing anointing upon this people. Lord, that our minds will not wonder, but that we will begin to comprehend the incomprehensible. That we will begin to see that which we cannot believe with our eyes. And hear that that we cannot believe with our ears. But it is true. And I thank you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. 
Amen. And so, Jesus is about to finish his course. He's about to see the Father again in not too long from now. We're in John 17. It's late in the Gospel of John. And Jesus says, Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son, that thy Son also may glorify thee. Isn't that awesome? Who does he want to glorify the Father to? Us. To us. He said, as thou hast given him power over all flesh, that he should give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. We see Jesus, now he's coming close. He said to the Father, the hour is come. Glorify thy Son. It's going to take your glory for me to get this done. And so in this late hour, Jesus begins to call for glory. Glory. Glorify. But not only is he calling for glory for himself, but he's calling for glory that he may give the glory unto us. So Jesus is calling for shareable glory. Amen. He's not saying, God, pour all of heaven's glory on me. He says, you give me what I need. And you give me what they, what they need. And Father, share. It, just put it upon everybody that's ever going to believe. Everybody that's ever going to receive this great gift that you have given. It's thou hast given him power over all flesh that he shall give eternal life to as many as thou hast given him. He's praying for shareable glory. Glory not only for the hour, not only for the moment that he is about to go through, the worst moment of his entire time, but he is crying out. He's looking down through the channels of time. He's seeing somehow, some way, that, that what he's going to do with the shame that he will suffer and, and with all of the humility, with all of the pain of the cat of nine tails, with them plucking the beard from his face, with them crucifying him. I know there's a loincloth on the movies, but they didn't have that. Uh, they were crucified naked in complete shame. And all of that shame and all that embarrassment, all that there, it must have taken it all to redeem us. It must have taken all that God has done. I don't think that God put Jesus through unnecessary anything. But that he allowed the son to carry what we should have carried. The sin, that's how much the sin brought us away from God. And so he is saying, God, I want to share this glory to as many eternal life and as many as thou hast given him. That's not all of the people he knew in that day. That's from now on and on and on and on and on and on and on. That's even to our day. And should the Lord tarry be on our day, it'll go on beyond that day too. And so he says in verse 3 of John 17, And this is life eternal. That they might know thee, the only true God. And Jesus Christ, what a witness from the Son to all, to all of mankind. Right? The only true God. Jesus confessed that. And Jesus Christ, whom thou hast sent. I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do. And now, O Father, glorify thou me with thine own self, with the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He says, now, Father, glorify me with that throne room glory. That throne room glory that I had before the world was. Listen to what he said. He said, I have glorified thee on the earth. I have finished the work which thou gavest me to do now. When? When I finish the work. Hallelujah. Can I say something? Glory is connected to finishing. Amen. Amen. If you're going to receive glory, it's because you finished. 
It's connected to finishing. If Jesus had stopped early, he would not have had the glory. He would not have finished his course. If we give up in the last mile of the way, we're not going to have any glory. Amen. Glory is connected to finishing, completing, accomplishing. Amen. All of those would have been the definition for the Greek. Finishing, completing, or completing, or accomplishing. Amen. Jesus was going to do the mission. You notice that Jesus wasn't freelancing. He wasn't saying, hey, Father, now the hour has come. I'm going to wing this. I'm just going to do this my way. I'm just going to do it the way that I feel it's best. I've been here and walking among these people for three and a half years. And I've lived for these 33 years and I've got the plan. So God, I'm just going to go ahead and do what I feel like I need to do. No, sir. That's not what he said. He's, he wasn't freelancing at all. He said, I've glorified thee on this earth. And he said, I have finished the work you gave me to do. How many of you know that's going to be a successful statement for any of us? We can come to the end of our life and say, hey, I've glorified God on this earth. I have finished the work that he gave me to do. And after he has finished, after he's completed, after he's accomplished, now, oh, Father, glorify me thy, uh, with thine own self. Now, wait a minute. Now, with thine own self. Now he's asking for glory at the God level. Amen. Glorify me. Uh, you know, with the glory. Glorify thou me with thine own self. With the glory which I had with thee before the world was. He said, God, I'm glad I've been here to do the mission. But I can't wait to get back to the glory. I can't wait to get back in that light of God. I can't wait to get back there in that city. Amen. And you're going to glorify me on the way there. I'm talking about uh, the glory and power exchange. And so God gave that to Jesus. Because Jesus was living in obedience to God. And so when Jesus was living in obedience and the, Jesus and the disciples were up on the mountain and they began to talk to Jesus about giving them some glory and, and what their reward's going to be and all those things, then God interrupted the conversation from heaven. And God steps in and he says, hey, hey, wait, 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 well, hold on now. This is my beloved son in whom I am well pleased. You hear him. You follow him. See, there's never a place that we remain connected to God without Christ. And this is part of the problem around the world, that there are many people that are seeking God, but they're seeking through others. They're seeking through their prophets. They're seeking through their great men, their great, uh, you know, visionaries and people that they're talking to. Well, it's all the same. No, God has one son, one begotten son. He created all, but he has begotten one. And that is Jesus Christ. And he says now... Now, God, I've glorified you. I have finished the work. And now that I've had a finished work, glorify thou me with your own self, with the glory that I had with you before the world was. He said, God, now that it is finished, I am finally able to return beside your right hand. I'm able to come. And so then look, look at this, verse 6. I have manifested thy name unto the men which thou gavest me out of the world. Thine they were. All right. He said, they were yours. And you gave them to me. Thou gavest them me. And they have kept the word. Now, they have known that all things whatsoever, that thou whatsoever has given me, are of thee. Amen. So Jesus made it very clear. Okay, just in case anybody gets confused. Jesus manifested the Father's name to his, the people with him. He didn't just say, 
Call on me, call on me, call on me. He said, I'm here because the Father sent me. I'm here doing the work of the Father. If you want to see the Father, you got to come through me. Amen. He didn't say, yeah, there's one of a billion ways. He says, there's one way. And that is that you have to come from me. And it wasn't my plan. It was God's plan. It was the Father's plan. All right? So he said, they were yours. But now you gave them to me and they've kept, they've kept your word. Now they've kept your word. Now they have known that all things whatsoever thou hast given me are of thee. Amen. Now he says, hey, look. Not only give that to me. Now, Lord, now that they know, give it to them. Give that glory. Right? He said in verse 8, For I have given unto them the words which thou gavest me, and they have received them, and has known surely that I came out from thee. And they have believed that thou didst send me. Do you see the key importance of believing that Jesus did come from the Father, that he was sent from the Father for this work of bringing mankind uh, to God? through salvation, for Jesus dying on the cross. And so Jesus is very specific, so we can be very specific. He said, I pray for them. I pray not for the world. At this point, he, I, I pray not for the world. I, I have testified before the world. I've stood in Herod's court, or I will stand. And all of these things that he had done throughout his life, but now this is about what he's doing. What he has done and what he's going to the Father and what he's going to do. He said, all of mine are yours and yours are mine and I am glorified in them. Verse 11, he says, and now I am no more in the world. But these are in the world and I come to thee, Holy Father. Keep through my own name those whom thou hast given me. That they may be one as we are. Now I know this isn't just ABC stuff. So y'all just here, just here. And this is awesome. He says, now I am no more in the world, but these are in the world. But wait a minute. He is still in the world. Right? Physically, Jesus is still in the world. But he says, I'm no more in the world. He says, listen, my spirit has already gone. My spirit has gone before me. My eyes are set on the finish line. Amen. The purpose which is at hand is the important thing. And he said, I, I, I'm not even in this world. He's still in this world. He's going to be whipped with the cat of nine tails. He's going to be crucified and naked on a cross, bleeding in total shame. The one human being that lived in this world without sin on that cross, dying for our sins. I'm no more in the world. He said, My, I've already settled it. I've already settled that this is now I'm in what is the mission before me. And so, but these are in the world. I come to you, Holy Father, keep them through your own name, whom you've given me, that they may be one as we are. Amen. Isn't it beautiful that one of the things that Jesus prayed in his last hours was that, that we may live in unity, that we may be one, that we may work together. And not war against one another. No, we just cannot do that. It is one kingdom. One Lord. One God. And we need to work together to win this world. He said, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in thy name. Now, how awesome is that? Jesus didn't say, while I was with them in the world, I kept them in my name. How many of you know Jesus' name would have been sufficient to keep them? But he didn't keep them in his name. He kept them in the Father's name. Amen. Isn't that awesome? I love that. He said, man, I've kept them in your name. He pointed them to the Father. He pointed them to the Father. He kept pointing them to the Father. And so I kept them in thy name. Not my name, it's your name. See, Jesus knew his position. He knew that he's the Son of God, but the Father is greater than the Son. Right? And Jesus took that. He came, he really had equality until he accepted his role. And then he became submissive to the Father. And so he says, those that you have given to me, though, this King James killing me, those that thou gavest me, I have kept. 
and none of them is lost but the son of perdition, that the scripture might be fulfilled. So now we know he's talking about who? Judas. Judas. What do you think the sin of Judas? Some people say, well, I believe that Judas didn't even believe in Christ. I don't believe that. I think Judas did believe in Christ. He believed in Christ so much that he wanted to put Christ in a position to defend himself and to call the kingdom down now. Judas' great sin was that he wanted the kingdom now. He couldn't admit that the kingdom wasn't here yet. Jesus was here and the kingdom is being shown and manifested and talked about through parables and teachings and all of these things. But he wanted it to happen now. He wanted it to come now. I believe with all of my heart that Judas' intention was that if they came and took Jesus, that God from heaven would spare no mercy upon them. And that he would rescue Christ from the crucifixion. I believe that's what Judas thought. But you know what? We cannot live by our own understanding. We cannot live by our own thoughts. God had a bigger plan, a greater plan than Judas. If God had done what Judas wanted, the world would have ended at the end of Jesus' life and we would have never been born. We would have never been born. But God has it in mind. I don't know if it's a particular number he's got in mind. I know he's such a personal God. If there's just certain names that he already has decided and already chose to say, hey, you know, I'll call you if you'll come to me. I don't know what the mark that it is, but I know that there's coming a moment that God's going to say it's finished. The cross was finished, but not the whole plan yet. Amen. And so he kept them in the Father's name. That's what we want to do is keep you in the Father's name. Pray to God. Seek God. He's your Father. He loves you. If He'll forgive you of your sins, He'll give you anything. He'll do anything for you if He'll forgive you from your sins. If He'd send Christ for you, He'd do anything for you. Now, like a good father, sometimes you have to say no to your children. Because not everything's good for them. All right? And so He goes on and He says, None were lost but the son of perdition. And of course... What a loss. Judas, the son of perdition. The word perdition is ruin or loss. Physically, spiritually, eternally wasted. Wasted. A God declared wasted life. And Judas, one of the twelve. He thought, man, I can push this hard and the kingdom will come right now. No, brother and sister, we need to follow God. We don't lead God. We follow God. Amen. And so he says in verse 13, And now come I to you. And these things I speak in the world that they might have my joy fulfilled in themselves. Verse 14, he says, I have given them thy word, and the world hath hated them, because they are not of the world. What's not of the world? The words of God. I've given them thy word, and the world has hated them. I gave the world the word, and the word hates them. Why? Because they are not of the world. The words of God are not of this world. Hallelujah. They come from a higher world. And Jesus said, not only because they are not of the world, even as I am not of the world. And then Jesus goes on and he says, I pray not that you should take them out of the world, but that thou should keep them from the evil. That's the prayer that God has been, that Jesus gave to God. I'm not asking you to take them out of the world, but you keep them in the world. Why does Jesus want us to be in the world? You know, if you only talk about church, church, 
you only talk about Jesus at church, you're missing part of the reason why you work in the, in the world. You go to that factory, you're a light to shine there. Not everybody's going to receive it. But there will be people looking for light. In the office, there'll be people looking for light. There'll be people at the family reunion that's looking for light. Amen? And so we just, we just hang out. We just, just keep on. We just keep on. We just keep talking about the kingdom, talking about the light of God, showing the joy of the Lord in our heart. This life is not always easy, but I'll tell you, it's the best one I've seen yet. Amen. Amen. You think the drug, uh, drug people are high? It's brutal. People that die from, from long-term drug use, it is brutal. It's horrible. It's a nightmare of a way to die. But people of God, man, they're at peace. Before they even step on the streets of gold, they're at peace. They already shine. I can name names. So many people I talk to in their dying days. People that we prayed, Lord, give them more days. We want to keep them longer. And I guess they lived out their days. People like Lula and so many others. And man, they begin to see beyond this world. Hallelujah. They begin to sense that other world's coming closer. Why? Because Jesus Christ is enough to keep you. To keep you all the way to the Father. All the way to the city of God. This, hey, you're working here. You're giving here. You're volunteering here. You're speaking to children here. You're putting money here. Amen. When that goes downtown to help somebody in need, or if that goes to another nation to help in a need, whatever it helps, you're a part of it. You've sown the seed. And you've given those things and they become eternal things instead of temporal things. Now, I like eating a Hershey bar every now and then. Anybody else like a Hershey bar? I do too. I mean, Snickers is all right, but every now and then I got to have just the Hershey bar. Just I've been to Hershey, Pennsylvania, as a matter of fact. Went and, and toured the factory. So if you ever go up toward Pennsylvania, be sure to go to Hershey. Pennsylvania. Their street lights at Hershey are shaped like candy kisses. Their street lights are shaped like candy kisses. It's true. I'm not telling, I wasn't drunk, wasn't high, never have drank, never did drugs. Other than what the doctors prescribed me. <laughs> God Even these things are so good. We have a great life living for the Lord. Amen. Amen. But can I tell you, when you step before him, you're not just going to get a a step higher. Eye has not seen. Ear has not heard. Neither has it entered in the heart of man. And I got a big imagination. What God has prepared for them that love him. And Jesus, when we love Jesus, the Father writes down our name. Amen. He said that. So when we love him, we love the Father. And so he says, I'm not asking you to take them out of the world. Because the world needs them. The world needs these people. He said, just keep them from the evil. And they're not of the world, even as I'm not of this world. Jesus has come to the last moments and days of his life. And before he leaves this world, he and the Father in this conversation And there's more. I mean, it's I really couldn't give you all the scripture that pertained to this. But they, 
were talking together about those who would believe. Leave them in the world so they can shine. Leave them in the world for a witness. But Father, when the time comes, bring them. As a matter of fact, Jesus said that what God had given to him, he was giving to the disciples. That's what I'm talking about when I talk about the glory and power exchange. When Jesus left here, he said he was gone before he was gone. He laid it all down. He left it all here. And he left it here that those who believe would pick it up and walk in it and live in it and and propagate it from generation to generation to generation until the end of all things and the kingdom of God comes in sight. Amen? He said, this is going to keep them. Take the glory you gave me. Take the the finishing, the power to finish. Amen? Hallelujah. Take the kingdom and manifest it unto those men that you gave me. We're part of it. It's still here because Jesus prayed this prayer. Let it go continually. Continually until the end of all things. Brother and sister, we are living still under that connection. The glory and power connection. He left His glory and His power here for those who would believe. You know, maybe we'd have a little more of that if we could just begin to believe it for ourselves. To become audacious enough. To go to the Father and say, Father, your son Jesus asked you to give your glory and power to those he left. And here we are. Give to us your glory and your power that in our days, in our uh, time and era, that we are able to walk in the same glory and the same power, the same unction of God's Holy Spirit. Amen. I'll tell you something. Probably not ought to. But I'm going to tell you anyway. Christians that stop receiving from God before they get the Holy Spirit has stopped short. The Holy Spirit isn't some vapor. You ain't going to go down the road and buy it at the store. The Holy Spirit is the third person of the Godhead. He is a person. He's the third person of the Godhead. If you deny the things of the Spirit, you deny the being of the Spirit of God. Amen? Now, you may have different gifts than I have. Others may have different gifts than either one of us have. But to be ready to say, God, I receive the glory and the power that Jesus left to the disciples. Because whether or not you know it, there's still a disciple Thomas in this world. There's probably a bunch of them. Right? Apostle Matthew, still in in here. You're here. You're following. Right? Rise up. Take that Spirit of God. Take it to work. Take it to the family reunion. Take it into whatever circumstance you're going through. Amen. And you will grow and grow and begin to be more and more. It's not our glory, so we have nothing to be proud of. But it's a gift given from Him. Therefore, we can be grateful, right? Don't have to be proud, but we can be grateful. Boy, there's times. There's times I didn't know how to pray, David. Didn't know how to pray. There's times there were problems, and I wasn't even fully sure what the problems were, let alone what the answer was. And some of those times, 
And that Holy Spirit began to speak up out of my belly and out of my lungs and out of my mouth a language that I did not know. And that God did not interpret. But I can tell you right now, you know when that is risen to the heavens. You know when that has been rising up before God. Amen. You don't have to know the interpretation because you know that the message has been delivered. Amen. That what Jesus left for them, they left for us. Amen. And that we can walk in that and live in that. That we can go to God and, and say, God, help me come through this season and this time. I'm grateful for the Holy Spirit. And He's not God Jr. Amen. He is a part of God's being. As you are a body, soul, and spirit, God is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. That's, it. That's Him. That's what He's made of. The Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Well, I can't imagine that. I can't either. But we're going to stand before Him. We're going to see him. Oh, come on. Paul said, not only are we going to see him, but he said, when we see him, we shall be like him. We shall be like him. Wow. Why would he make us like him? I like messing with people. I asked somebody that question. Why does he want us to be like him? And they're like, I, 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 I don't know. I said, I don't know. Maybe he's going to send you to some world and bring them to God. Not actually, actually making you Jesus, but as one of the sons of God that have been redeemed. We may arrive in worlds we don't even know exist and tell them about what God did when this earth rebelled. How he gave his son. And hey, I'm one of the redeemed ones. I'm one that would have been lost for eternity. But God gave his son to this earth. And he saved me. We may testify for all of eternity. To all of the creations of God. I don't know. That's a pretty good stab at it though, isn't it? Huh? I think so. If we're going to be eternal beings, we must be going to be doing something for eternity. Stand with me. Thank you for listening to today's Church of the Living God, Living Godcast. We trust and pray that you were blessed by today's word. If you'd like to contact us for prayer or for more information about Church of the Living God, please visit our Facebook page at WinCityCOLG or give us a call at 859-745-1865.